A quick new idea, daily, from the world's greatest TEDx talks. I'm your host, Atosa Leone, and this is TEDx Shorts. What images come to mind when you hear the word contamination? Maybe landfills, industrial parks, or nuclear waste. But what about the spaces whose very mission it is to directly benefit human health? Our hospitals. Gary Cohen is a healthcare advocate who points out that the medical industry is a major source of environmental contamination. In today's talk, he advocates for our hospitals and clinics to be added to the list of spaces in need of a greener change. In 1996, I heard something so absurd and disturbing, I I didn't believe it. Dioxin is produced by burning chlorinated plastics like the kind that are in IV bags and tubing. They go out into the environment, they build up in the food chain, they build up in us, and they're linked to cancer. The healthcare sector, devoted to healing, was itself a large source of contamination. It stopped me cold. But that was just the tip of the iceberg because hospitals were also an enormous source of mercury contamination. In 1996, there were thermometers that were breaking in American hospitals and winding up in our air, in our water, and ultimately into the fish we ate. The same year, the U.S. government reported that there was enough mercury in kids being born that kids might have learning problems later in life. So the fact that Hospitals were poisoning people in service of healing them. It was crazy. How are we going to stop the epidemic of cancer and other chronic diseases that we all face if the healthcare sector itself is contributing to it? So I decided to start an organization called Healthcare Without Harm to heal the healthcare sector's pollution and to put health back into the center of healing and the healthcare sector. I met three women who actually worked in healthcare, and they've been allies with me for the last 19 years. The first one worked for Kaiser Permanente. The other two were Catholic nuns who worked for Dignity Healthcare, which was one of the largest Catholic hospital systems. So we worked with their hospitals to show them how they could reduce their waste, how they could recycle the non-infectious parts, how they could save money in the process, but most importantly, how they could stop burning all this waste. And they showed other hospitals how to do it. And by 2006, American hospitals were no longer a large source of dioxin contamination. At the same time, we worked with Kaiser Permanente to get them to phase out their use of mercury thermometers. The problem with was that the mercury thermometers were cheap and the alternatives cost a lot more money. But here, size really does matter. Kaiser's big. They have enormous purchasing power. So when they said that they would buy millions of non-mercury thermometers, the price for the alternatives went down and within a few years they had phased out mercury thermometers. And then we leveraged that victory with other hospitals and then 28 European countries and then Argentina, and then the Philippines. And then by 2013, there was a global treaty signed that phases out all mercury measuring devices by the year 2020. These are early and important victories on the path to sustainable health care. But the healthcare sector has a long, long way to go before they truly embody the Hippocratic Oath to do no harm. Here are some facts. Hospitals use twice as much energy as commercial buildings. Hospitals are still enormous consumers of toxic chemicals. Some of those chemicals leach directly into vulnerable patients when they're getting their fluids from IV bags and tubing made of PVC plastics. Some of the disinfectants used are asthma triggers, which help explain why nurses have some of the highest asthma rates of any profession. And then there are the buildings themselves. 
built with toxic building materials, furniture drenched in toxic flame retardants, toxic cleaners on the floor, depressing lighting. They look bad, they smell bad, they feel bad. And so we challenged healthcare architects. Can you build cancer centers without carcinogens? Can you build children's hospitals without chemicals linked to birth defects and, and asthma? And healthcare architects came forward and worked with us to design a framework that puts health at the center of building design. And within a few years, hundreds of hospitals were coming up and being built that used energy-efficient technologies, that had natural light, that used safer building materials. Hospitals can be anchors. They can be places of refuge in the coming storms of climate change. They can be the last building standing in extreme weather events, so they can take care of the people who are sick and wounded by those extreme weather events. They have enormous purchasing power. They're economic engines in our communities and in the economy as a whole. So we're working with them to transform what they buy and to use the power of healthcare to begin to bend the economy toward health and justice. Here's a few examples that are promising. Kaiser Permanente now has 50 farmers markets in their healthcare facilities and the communities they serve, and they and hundreds of hospitals are using their purchasing power to support sustainable farmers in their communities to bring healthy food to their patients and employees. Kiowa Hospital in Kansas was completely wiped out by a tornado several years ago, but was rebuilt, completely run on wind power, as is the whole town of Greensburg, Kansas. And we're working with the United Nations to design environmental standards that can, that can transform all of their healthcare purchasing. These are hopeful signs that we can move healthcare upstream to deal with the social and environmental conditions that are making people sick in the first place. But there's still a lot of healing work that needs to be done. Hospitals and clinics around the world can be powered by renewable energy and can show the rest of us how to make this critical transformation to a low-carbon future. Hospitals can lead the way in defending the rights of our kids to be born toxic-free, to defending our rights to clean air, to clean water, to healthy food, to safe products that don't poison our kids. They can help us understand that you can't have healthy people on a sick planet. The TEDx talk you just listened to was recorded at a TEDx event in Madrid, Spain. All TEDx events are independently organized by volunteers who believe in TED's mission of ideas worth spreading. Special thanks to the organizing team at TEDx Madrid. Want to listen to more TEDx talks? Visit our website at ted.com slash TEDx Shorts. I'm Matos Leone. Thanks for listening and see you tomorrow.